Hey guys, welcome back to Geek J, where we make tech tutorials and gaming simpler and better. Today we'll be tackling the complete clean removal of the AMD drivers using Display Driver Uninstaller or DDU and AMD's cleanup utility in safe mode. So our systems are going to be crystal clear of anything in regards to AMD drivers and uh, we will then install the RID community multi-kernel drivers so we will get those uh, GPUs running as smoothly as possible so to begin we need some tools and to get started we're gonna go onto our desktop and I'm gonna provide all the links we will need in the description below you know where we apparently get everything in this channel I, I don't know so anyway let's start with display driver and installer as you can see over here uh, we have a lot of different versions obviously we will go for the latest one you can click on read more or the image over here it's going to take you to the same place we want to uh, go to click here for download and support and then we're gonna go with download DDU portable self-extracting so after this finishes downloading we are going to go to the RID website and download their own uh, package driver so this is the website we're gonna go directly into download. And as you can see here, this is the latest package and it is targeted to Polaris, Vega and Navi GPUs. They have other legacy GCN packages. We will download this driver as well. We will also need to download the AMD Adrenaline control panel. And after our downloads finish, we are going to have to extract those packages and we will move on from there. So let's go back onto our desktop. And as you can see here, I have the DDU version, the latest uh, 25.2.1, which is this one. And if we right click and go to 7-zip and extract to uh, the name of the folder will be this kind of long name which is WHQL RID software blah blah um, we will get this new folder over here that has everything we're gonna need to install this um, community driver and as you can see the AMD cleanup utility is also in this package so we don't need to scour the web and find this AMD cleanup utility.exe. Go one step backwards and I'm gonna create a shortcut. So when I want to have access to this, I will just double click and boom, we have access to this folder and uh, we can run the setup and the cleanup and everything else we need to do. So let's get started. So the first step will be to go into the DDU folder and it's really important we need to right click and run this as an administrator. Click yes on the UAC prompt and you will see here we have launch options now, right? We need to go into safe mode which is the recommended way of doing this and then reboot to safe mode and I'm going to see you guys when we reboot into safe mode. We will now need to select a device type and the manufacturer is usually auto detected and then click on clean and do not restart. This will take some time and your screen might go black sometimes but it will go back and then we will run the AMD cleanup utility. We'll need to run the AMD cleanup utility as administrator and this process will take some time. 
just click OK on the prompt and wait for it to finish. Once it's done, if you want you can view the report but there's no real need. And after you click finish, click yes reboot now and your computer will restart in normal mode instead of safe mode. Okay, I don't know how well this is gonna look, but the main thing we wanna do is just install our graphics driver. So let's go ahead and do that. So from this extracted folder, we're just gonna run this setup.exe. Click yes on the UAC, we'll be prompted with this. And from here, we're gonna select a D and then press enter to disable the music and uh, select the number one, just type one and then press enter to start the installation. And by the way, this is future John because while I was recording this, it was installing the driver. So obviously the audio got corrupted and uh, it kind of looked weird and sounded um, also weird, but I was kind of able to salvage the installation video, but not the audio. So yeah, after it detected our um, hardware configuration, we're getting these two options. I'm gonna select the standard profile and then move on to the next options. And over here from the driver preset, I'm gonna select the 25.2.1 consumer for Navi Arc. And here we're gonna select the core driver mode. If someone is planning to use a lot of emulators, I would suggest you use the minimal uh, driver level optimization. But in general, the core would be my suggestion for everyone else. Over here, I'm gonna go with the factory AMD kernel parameter configuration because even if we've um, in the past configured our kernel, it's best to start with a clean slate. So the kernel configuration happens after the driver installation. So I think it's best practice to just go with a factory AMD. And then if we want to uh, actually implement any of the kernel configurations that are offered from this package, we can do so from the um, command window we are using and the options that are provided. Over here for the desktop or mobile switchable, we're gonna go with AMD default and uh, we're gonna do the same for the ultra low power state option under it. We're gonna go with the defaults by AMD. The driver branding mode, I will go with the adrenaline red there is nothing else to be gained, just a color scheme, so I don't really care about that. I'm gonna stick with what I know and like. For the software package, you can choose 2420 or 2410. Um, I mean, they say the last relief DVR support was the 2410 version, but 2420 also works. And I think we did eventually go for the 2420. We're gonna go with the classic control panel with Relieve DVR and VR add-ons um, support. And uh, finally, we're gonna go with advanced here for the software profile. Minimum, I would suggest you go with standard so you have the tuning options and advanced for, you know, extra options, I guess. So over here, we're pretty much done. We need to just type S on our keyboard and then enter. And after that, the driver installation will begin. But first we need to select the installation method. We're gonna go with the Microsoft installer and not the snappy driver installer as it's a lot better. But yeah, that's pretty much the driver installation. So next over here, after the driver installation is done, it's going to prompt us regarding the Adrenaline software installation. So it defaults to the classic package installation. And if we press S and then enter, 
it's going to check the amd-id folder it has created for the installation package so after placing the downloaded package in this folder it will be recognized and it will start installing and we will soon have our um, adrenaline software installed so let's wait for that okay just click close after this is done and the other thing i usually do is um select the hyper rx overrider over here and i usually go for option two which is chill anti-lag frtc pro scaling ris and rsr all together they can be enabled so i'm gonna go for that one okay the enablement is done usually this crashes obs obviously because it disables and re-enables the gpu so it can like apply the tweaks to the kernel level so that's logical to happen so don't be alarmed your screen might flicker black for a second or something and then it's going to be back to normal and then what i really like to do is if you guys play any kind of online game that uses any kind of kernel level protection like any kind of anti-cheat you will need to go to uh, option 7 on the main menu and apply the Microsoft WHQL workaround for kernel anti-cheat related issues. If you don't do this, a lot of games will just lock you up. So I'm going to do that right now. I don't know if that will crash the recording again, so I'm going to keep an eye on that as well. But as you can see, we're going to be prompted with this multiple times and we have to select install this driver software anyway as many times as it asks us to do so. Hopefully the audio is coming through clear. I think in some of the recordings the audio is going to be kind of um, messed up. So I'll probably do a voiceover when that happens. All right, and I think basically this is it. So I'm going to uh, type X and then enter. And let's see if we have access to our um, adrenaline software options. So I'm going to right click and run the MD adrenaline software. Uh, we had a black screen for a few seconds there. Let's wait for a few more moments and here we have it. I'm going to click on skip this. I'm going to clear everything over here. I'm going to go into this cog on the right side and then into preferences and probably disable everything. Tutorials and I'm going to enable the animations and effects because I kind of like the animation and effects. So after we've done this, basically we are done. And the reason we use these drivers, let me actually read some of the stuff. I'm going to show you some of the stuff they have on screen. These are their key features. And I'm not going to read everything they have on the website. I'm just going to kind of TLDR it for you. So compatibility, they say it's kind of more stable and updated uh, for older AMD GPUs that uh, official drivers have dropped so that's super super nice common bugs and official drivers are fixed in uh, the rid versions M most of them not not all of them uh, by the way uh, community this is a big plus for me driver development benefits from user feedback basically this is what they're saying and everyone can contribute and help improve the drivers over time and if you join their Discord, they are now, again, pretty active. Security, I think it's a big benefit, and that's why they mention it on the website over here. Uh, they say they have a built-in WHQL support for better app and OS compatibility. Even with non-WHQL state, uh, you can still play online games without issue. So that's really nice. They mention flexibility, which includes advanced tweaks beyond simple registry edits 
uh, long-term service packages keep older GPUs relevant while adding new features basically so that's really really nice and if you go on discord you can probably find some of the uh, not exactly I think changelog but they have like a development highlights and they mention uh, various internal fixes for device IDs and GPU detection improved uh, performance in the GPU toolbox and it's now faster at uh, querying presets reintroduced some missing AMD BD code display for advanced debugging and uh, addressed system freezing issues with MSI Afterburner on older GPU kernels and also they have resolved a color corruption uh, for um, DirectX 11 I think um, issues not only titles but also if you use some kind of emulator and you selected DirectX 11 you would have some color corruption happening over there and it was mostly happening on APU kernels if you were using those so handheld devices or laptops and stuff like that so yeah that's it you've now completely uninstalled and cleaned your system of any kind of old drivers and you have installed the RID community multi-kernel driver. If you found this helpful, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to my channel for more content like this, click on that bell to never miss any of my videos, leave a comment below where we apparently do everything for some reason, and uh, give me your opinion, give me your feedback, and I'd love to hear from you. Stay geeky, guys. I hope you come again for another video don't forget to follow me on these other social media over here we stream live on twitch kick and rumble i might do only twitch and youtube in the future we haven't done a live stream in in some time now but i mostly try to focus on making these videos and on my health maybe we'll have a health update video at some point because some people have been sending me messages about this. As always, thank you for all the love and support you show me, guys. And I'm going to catch you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.